Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the very first Vine to Wine to Go. There has been a bunch of excitement leading up to this event, so let's kick it off with an official welcome from two of the most amazing people in the Santa Clarita Valley, the Executive Director of Circle of Hope, Laura Kirchhoff, and the Circle of Hope Chairman of the Board, Alex Hafizi. Thank you for joining Alex and myself tonight at Vine to Wine to Go. These last 10 weeks have been crazy as Alex, myself, and the entire Circle of Hope board and staff have learned how to navigate the unknown. Our lives have been interrupted and somewhat put on hold, but cancer doesn't get put on hold, which is why we are so thankful for you and your support here this evening. Much of this evening will be interactive. You will learn about the food, the wine, but most importantly, we are here to raise some very important funds. So let's get started with something interactive. Here's how it works. There's a little button on the bottom of your screen, a Zoom button that allows you to give the thumbs up and you can find that button right about there. Click on it if you or a family member or a loved one have ever received a cancer diagnosis. Click your button now. Wow, I see those, those thumbs up coming in. This is amazing to see how so many lives in this community have been touched in one way or the other by cancer. You and your loved ones are the reason that Circle of Hope exists. We exist to provide financial assistance for medical treatments to individuals with cancer. We believe that no one should ever have to go through cancer alone. And we believe everyone should have a hand to hold during this very important fight. Speaking of having a hand to hold, grab a loved one, assuming that you're not social distancing with them right now, and let's make a toast. Raise your glass as we say thank you for your continued support of Circle of Hope. Thank you. Oh my goodness, that is delicious. We have a great program for you this evening and Alex and I are gonna check in with you later. But for now, it is my pleasure to introduce Melanie Meyer, the newest member of our Circle of Hope board and your MC for the evening. I am so glad that Laura introduced you to that thumbs up feature on Zoom. I'm gonna ask you to participate again by giving a thumbs up to all of our sponsors this evening. You can find a list of the sponsors in your program. Now, if you are really Zoom savvy, there's also a chat feature. And so if you know what that is, why don't you give a personal thank you to our presenting sponsor, which is Logics Federal Credit Union. Logics Federal Credit Union donated all of the wine glasses and the bags that you've received this evening. Now, I hope that you have settled in, you are enjoying some delicious food, and you are savoring some fantastic wine and beer. Throughout the evening, I will be introducing the restaurants, the wineries, the breweries, and there's going to be a Q&A with Santa Clarita's very own Eve Bushman. We will also be providing you with some entertainment from Alicia Humphreys and Steve Dole, and we'll be closing out the evening with the sounds from Lance Allen. We hope that you take time throughout the evening to bid on our online auction items, because frankly, cancer doesn't get put on hold during a pandemic. Cancer doesn't stop. It doesn't ever stop. And our work at Circle of Hope doesn't ever stop either. So let's fill up that wine glass. Let's get the evening started with the song, Lean On Me, because frankly, we are all in this together. Hey there, thank you so much, Melanie. Steve and I are so excited to be here and to be a part of this event, and we're so grateful to each and every one of you for coming uh, to this virtual event and for being a part of such a great cause. So we're gonna sing a few songs for you. We hope you love them. We're gonna start with this one. Let's try this one.
always tomorrow Lean on me when you're not strong And I'll be your friend I'll help you carry on For it won't be long Till I'm gonna need somebody Swallow your pride If I have things You need to borrow For no one can fill Those of your needs That you won't let show You just a cup on brother When you need a hand we all need somebody to lean on I just might have a problem that you'll understand We all need somebody to lean on Lean on me when you're not strong And I'll be your friend I'll help you carry on for it won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on you just a cup on the brother when you need a hand we all need somebody to lean on I just might have a problem that you'll understand we all need somebody to lean on if there is a lot you have to bear that you can't carry i'm right up the road well i'll share your load if you just call me call me if you need a friend call me if you need a friend yeah call me now when you need a friend oh call me now when you need a friend Ah, great song by Bill Withers, and we learned it just for this event, and sadly he just passed away less than a couple months ago, but we are glad to get this one in there, and uh, looking forward to doing another one for you. Uh, anyway, back to you. Lean On Me, what a great song. Thank you, Steve and Alicia. An event like this would not have happened if it weren't for the generous donations of wine from many individuals and wineries. Right now, I am enjoying a lovely glass of Chardonnay from our local Two Papas Wines. And some of you are likely enjoying another delicious Chardonnay from Bolt to Wines. Now, I wanna take just a brief moment to remind the VIP ticket holders that I will be drawing the name of the raffle winner a little later this evening. The winner of the raffle will be taking home a Magnum bottle of a 2017 Dusty Nabor Cabernet Sauvignon. Now this is an exquisite bottle of wine and this video will tell you more. Dusty Neighbor Wines is located in Westlake Village, California. Uh, we source all of our fruit from mostly Santa Barbara County and Paso Robles. Uh, we've been around since 2015. Currently, we have about 14 wines across three brands. Uh, there's the Dusty Neighbor brand. We have Bolt 2 Wines, which is my partner Karin's brand uh, under the same winery. 
And we have another brand called NSO by Dusty Neighbor, which stands for No Special Occasion. Uh, this is our value brand, our everyday drinking brand. And across those three brands, we have about 14 different wines, uh, mostly centered around Cabernet Sauvignon, that's our flagship wine. Uh, but we also do rosé, we do two different rosés, three different rosés, um, Grenache, Pinot Noir, and uh, Cabernet Signe. And then we do a lot of Rhone varietals too, Viognier, Roussan, Grenache Blanc, Syrah, and Grenache. Hey everyone, Taylor Kelstrom, co-chair Vine to Wine to Go. I just want to thank our staff, our board members, and our volunteers at Circle of Hope for bringing tonight's evening to you all. Without them, none of this would be possible, and they've worked tirelessly in under 30 days to bring this event to life. And that's what Circle of Hope is all about. We're here to work hard and help people going through cancer. And because of you guys, our viewers, and our attendees, that is why we're able to help as many people as we are because of your love and your support of Circle of Hope. And I just want to thank you guys for attending and I hope you guys enjoy and thank you again for all your support of Circle of Hope. Thank you, Taylor. Okay, it's time for audience participation again. Click on that thumbs up button if you are enjoying either the free range Mary's Chicken or the Petit Filet Mignon from Old Town Junction. Let's check them out. Um, it's been a long journey. This is a passion project. We're already there. We're at the end of the race. And we're ready to open the doors for the community. I think as a chef for 23 years, that's always been a project, is to open your own restaurant. You work for a lot of great names and great people, but it's always nice to have your own. What makes Junction unique is um, it's food for it. Uh, I have a big culinary staff. Everyone's excited about the food. Um, everyone in the back of the house is culinarians. We are a scratch kitchen. We try to do as much as we can. Um, baking, uh, cooking, fabrication, and it's community driven. We want people to have something unique where they can come here, have a great meal, it's consistent, and then also feel like it's their second home. Junction is just uh, refined American cuisine. We're very food driven, powerhouse kitchen. Chef Daniel Otto, um, our executive chef and owner, uh, Clayton Reiser is our chef de cuisine, and Adam Bocal is our sous chef. Um, so trying to just match up and hit on all cylinders with our, with our bar program. Uh, we have a very great wine list as well, uh, predominantly California wine. So just trying to complement that, uh, that very uh, talented back of the house uh, kitchen team. We're gonna have uh, 12 craft cocktails on the menu and to kind of coincide with the kitchen's model, we're gonna be changing seasonally and coming up with certain drink specials. We have a lot of play on some old favorites. Uh, like your old town fashion, we have this play on an old fashioned, um, some minor tweaks to it, sophisticated hound, which I made you here. We're getting fresh juices, uh, and I get a lot of assistance from the kitchen. Um, infused simple syrups, uh, you know, fresh juice, like I said, um, and also adding some culinary delights to our drinks. Uh, on our old town fashion, we put a little piece of house made beef jerky on the side to, uh, to just accompany the drink. I'm a family man. Um, I've been, uh, I have three beautiful kids, a beautiful wife of 20 years. Um, I've just really pushed myself out in the community. I love our community. I try to do as many things as we can. Um, I support our Carousel Ranch, Heart of the West. I support Feed SCV and a lot of other communities and charities for our, our community. So I'm, I'm rooted in and I love this area. Reviving the spirit of hospitality. That's, uh, that's our vision uh, from the get-go, so just trying to hit that out of the park and uh, do the best we can for our community. Come say hi, I'm Chef Daniel, and come in and enjoy a great meal, and I'd love to come out and say hello and, and start another relationship. During that video, I took a glance at the auction site, and oh my goodness, there are some amazing items to be bid upon. One of the most amazing items is a bottle of 2014 Gallanita. Now, for those of you in the know, this is a true cult collectible wine. Now, I'm gonna give you a few minutes to refill your glass, check out that auction site, where you can not only make a direct donation to Circle of Hope, but you can bid on that bottle of Gallanita and you can bid on a number of other auction items. The easiest way, I think, for you to get to the auction site is to go to your program and find the QR code. Take your phone and hover over that QR code with your camera. 
When you hover over the code, it will take you directly to the auction site where you can bid on that Galanita. Time is a wasting, get your bid in. All right, you guys ready for another song? Can you help me unravel my latest mistake? I don't love them. Winter just wasn't my season. Yeah, we walk through the door, so accusing their eyes. Like they have any right at all to criticize hypocrites. You're all here for the very same reason. Cause you can't jump the track We're like cars on a cable Life's like an hourglass glued to the table No one can find the rewind button, girl So cradle your head in your head
I'm back. Let's find that thumbs up button again and say thank you to Alicia and Steve for the fantastic music. There's more great music to come, but for now, let's thank them. Now, when they were playing, I saw that there was some auction activity going on during that song, and I noticed that there seems to be a theme with some of the auction items. It's either about wine or beer or other types of spirits, or it's about taking care of yourself and those you love, and that's important. I know, because I'm a cancer survivor. I finished my chemo and radiation treatments almost exactly one year ago. I can't imagine having to go through cancer treatments during a pandemic. It was scary enough one year ago, and it would be terrifying now. It's why the work that Circle of Hope does is so, so very important. Circle of Hope not only provides financial assistance for medical treatments, they provide education, and sometimes most importantly, what they provide is emotional support. Please take a moment to go to that auction site and do two things. First, make a donation, make a direct donation to Circle of Hope. And two, bid up those auction items. Remember, it's not about what kind of deal you can get in those auction items. It's about raising money for this fantastic organization. Hey guys, it's Greg Amsler, owner of the Salt Creek Grill. First of all, I want to thank Circle of Hope for inviting us to be a part of this uh, fantastic project they have here. And hopefully we can raise a lot of money for everybody. Um, as you can see, what we've been doing uh, since the uh, shutdown is a lot of maintenance, repairs, and improvements. And we've been doing a lot of painting, a lot of refreshing, uh, new bathrooms, uh, partial new bathrooms. And the uh, thing I'm excited about is uh, in our private dining room, we have a living wall. And uh, we'll get a picture of that to you guys. And uh, we hope to be open real soon here. I was hoping to be open uh, by now, but obviously we're not. So uh, we'll hang in there. We look forward to seeing all you guys back sooner, hopefully, uh, than later. And I want to thank everybody for the support that you've been giving us for the past, boy, almost two months, I guess, or over two months. So thank you very much. Um, it, it helps. Uh, it helps us. It helps the staff. Um, we're able to keep uh, people employed. Able to keep serving food, and that's what we do, and that's what we want to do. So enjoy yourselves tonight. Have fun, and uh, we'll see you soon. Oh my goodness! Look at this. Look at this circle of hope face mask. Janine Jones spent hours upon hours making a circle of hope face mask for every single one of you, and they are in your baskets tonight. Thank you, Janine. Let's give her another thumbs up. Now, our second featured restaurant for the evening has been a fixture in the Santa Clarita Valley for more than 20 years. If you are enjoying the Cajun chicken pasta or the meatloaf from Salt Creek Grill, click on that thumbs up button again. Okay, so is anybody ready for a refill? I certainly am and I am moving to a blend from Mystic Hills Vineyard. Some of you may have wine from the Double Trouble Wine Tasting Room on Main Street in downtown Newhall. If you haven't been there, you should definitely visit. Others of you may have received a Tempranillo from Cavaletti Vineyards, so let's check all three videos out.
Good afternoon, my name is Patrick Kelly. I am the owner and grower for Cavaletti Vineyards. Today we're pouring a rosé of Tempranillo, 91% Tempranillo, 6% uh, Grenache, 3% Syrah. We're pouring a Grenache from Los Angeles County, single vineyard of northern LA County, and pouring a single vineyard Syrah from Ventura County. So we're very focused on uh, European style wines, very balanced, good natural acidity. Uh, they're all aged in neutral oak with the exception of the rosé, which is aged in stainless. Uh, very, very, very crisp, very clear wines, very food friendly. All our wines are available via the website to our mailing list. So if you're interested, sign up for the mailing list. Oh my God. I just checked out the auction site again. There are some bidding wars going on. And I know this because I have my phone and I've been notifications that I have been outbid a number of items. So good job keeping that bidding up and we're here to raise money. Now I think the Galanita is getting bid again too. I got bid on that, outbid on that as well. Uh, just a second. I just got a text from and she said that we have received some amazing direct donations. So thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your generosity. Now, regarding those direct donations, I want to remind you that if you work for an organization that matches your charitable donations, please, please, please submit that request. Just think of this, a $250 gift or donation can turn into a $500 gift or a $1,000 donation can turn into a $2,000 donation and a $5,000 donation could turn into a $10,000 donation. I could just keep going, but I'm pretty sure you get the idea. Now, that said, let's keep this bidding excitement going. We're going to cut to the Wolf Creek restaurant video and I am going to be paying attention to that auction site so that I can see more of those direct donations and some more bidding action. And by the way, there is a Wolf Creek gift certificate in one of the auction baskets. You better go check it out. Creek Restaurant and Brewing Company. We're looking forward to this event and I wanna bring you into the kitchen right now and show you what we're gonna be offering you as one of the three choices. Come on in. Oh, look at this. We got some chicken piccata working. It's going to be breaded chicken, mashed potatoes, covered with a lemon caper sauce and some sautéed mushrooms. This is just the beginning of it. So, oh, and then there's broccoli added, mashed potatoes, and then the final breaded chicken breast chicken piccata. Awesome. All right. So on your night of the event, you guys will be served on the patio. And this is one of the three options that you'll have. But I want to show you that on any other given night beyond the event, there's multiple ways to get our good food. Come on out. We have a brand new backside pickup. So you're able to get your to-go food right here in your car. You order online, drive up with the driver's side window here at the door. We'll go over the ticket with you, hand you the food, and you're off to eat. We look forward to serving you here at Wolf Creek Restaurant. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Does anybody need to stretch after eating all of that delicious food? I certainly do. Now, we are going to do the raffle drawing next. But before we do, audience participation time. So stand up. Come on, stand up, put your arms in the air. Whew. Stretch to the right, and then stretch to the left. Now maybe roll your shoulders a little bit, take a deep breath. Oh, I feel so much better. It's really good that I have stretchy clothes at night. Okay, so let's raffle off this delicious bottle of Dusty Neighbor wines. Here's the basket with all of the names of the VIP ticket holders. I'm mixing them up and 
this person, who is this? John Egan. John Egan, congratulations. You are the new owner of this beautiful bottle of Dusty Neighbor Wines. Now, we will be getting in touch with you uh, so that you can pick this up or, or we will deliver it to you. But just so you know, John, I would really like to share and just maybe one small glass of that wine with you. That would be fantastic. Now, I am thinking it's time for another refill. And this time I am looking to enjoy a Malbec from Artisan Uprising. We have a few other varietals that have been made available to you this evening. One of them's from Parhelion Cellars, as well as Le Chen, Byron Blatty Wines, and Puchella. Let's check out their videos. Did anyone else notice that you have a can of beer in your bag this evening? Anheuser-Busch graciously donated one can of beer to everyone in attendance this evening. Now, between the wine and the beer, I think it's a really good idea that this is a virtual event and we are all sheltering at home in place tonight. Now, if you are like me and you are on your second glass of wine or actually your third glass of wine, this is the perfect time to be introduced to Santa Clarita's own Eve Bushman. Eve is the owner of Eve's Wine 101 and she's here to provide some wine tips, some wine education, and some answers to questions that you may have. You can go ahead and submit your questions via the chat feature and we will do our best to get those questions to Eve. Here you go, Eve, it's all yours. Okay, I've unmuted myself. Can people hear me? Give me a thumbs up or a wave. Okay, cool, all right. So you're all muted because there's like 90 of you. 
I have 20 minutes with you, so you can ask questions in the chat, and I'll do my best to answer them. But for those of you that don't know who I am, I have my little cheat sheet here. My name is Eve Bushman. I've been the Wine and Spirits writer for SCB Elite Magazine out here locally for over 10 years. I've been creating events and co-hosting events for 10 years. I have a WSCT, a Wine and Spirits Education Trust certification, a level two. I have a Saki certification, level one. I have an American Wine Specialist certification. I have a video called Wine Immersion on YouTube that has over 16,000 views. It's for wine beginners, wine 101ers. I've served as a wine judge three times. Doesn't mean I know much, so... <laughs> But I'm here for you if you have any questions tonight. Hi. Okay, what's the best way to hold a wine glass? Okay, this is from Alex Hafizi, and he should already know how to hold a wine glass. I talked about this with him many a time, but, you know, those Hafizis, they're, they're very hard to reach. So anyway, so this is my Logic's wine glass. I, I can't see myself. I'm calling my husband. I want to see myself. But the Logic wine glass we got tonight is a beautiful Bordeaux wine glass for tasting your Bordeaux wines, your Cab wines, a basic wine glass for everybody as far as holding this wine glass if you can see me you want to hold your wine glass by the stem basically if you put your wine glass here it looks like you don't know anything all you're doing is putting fingerprints on your wine glass and you're also warming up a wine that doesn't need to be warmed up the only time you're going to see someone doing this is because they were served a white wine that was over chilled and if it's so chilled that i can't smell anything and i can't taste anything then i'm going to warm up that glass every every 99 of the time my hand is on the stem so when you're watching a movie or watching TV and you see somebody holding a wine glass like this and they're supposed to be some freaking millionaire, they don't know what they're doing. So that's the story <laughs> on the wine glass. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, what do the lines on the cup mean? I don't even know what that means myself. I can tell you that uh, one of the tricks that winemakers do or wineries do is the bottom part of a printing on a wine glass is usually their pour line. So just for it to cheat for them as they want to stop pouring there. But basically, just to answer my own question, if you want to pour wine into a wine glass property, you pour it to the widest part of the wine glass. And that way you're going to get the best aromas when you go to smell it. You don't want to pour it too high. Okay? Let me see here. Uh -huh. if, you, if you don't like acidic wines, how do you order it? Do you say full body? Oh, that's an interesting question question i uh, acidic wines my husband and i both don't care for acidic wines most of the time you don't want to order a sauvignon blanc oh is that taylor hi <laughs> you don't want a sauvignon blanc it's highly acidic and it will i can maybe have one glass of an acidic wine um so stay away from sauvignon blanc some chardonnays that are un -oak, stay away from un -oak chardonnays um full bodied is a whole nother thing that's a whole nother term but basically on the acidic part no sauvignon blancs and make sure your, your chardonnay is oaked um, out of all the wine donated, which ones are your favorites? Okay, you know what? I don't like that question because this is my list of all the wonderful winemakers that donated wine to us tonight. They're all my favorites. Uh, I did have one tonight I never had heard of before that I will look, at, I will look for. Somebody donated Cannonball. I don't know. That's just something interesting. But they're all wonderful. All these guys gave us their wine for free. So they're all my favorites. That's What's, that's, what's the best thing? Drinking temp. Oh, the best drinking temperature for red wine? My husband's asking me the question. It's, he's reading it here. I want to say it's like 57 or something. Steve Elzer, my expert, is online tonight. I want to say 57. It's not chilled like it's from your refrigerator. If that's too cold. But you're, most of the rule of thumb is supposed to be room temperature. But you know, here in Santa Clarita, room temperature is 80. So no, obviously, you're not going to drink it at room temperature. So when it's hot outside, my wine in my glass is going to be colder then obviously the temperature outside. So most of your chillers that you have are set at a certain temperature, but I, I can't tell you off the top of my head, that's somewhere between 50 and 60 something degrees. Too cold, it's too cold in the fridge, too cold in the basic fridge. In what order should you drink or offer reds at a dinner party? That's from Kelly. I would say, depending on what you're serving, we go from the light reds to the heavier reds standard. So you're going to start with Pinot Noirs and Grenache. And you can tell by even looking at the wine glass, this is not a Pinot or a Grenache. We can ask my friend Double E, who's on here tonight. Most Pinots and Grenache are a lighter color, lighter color, lighter wine. It's pretty basic, right? So when you start with your, your reds at night, you're going to start with your lighter colored wines to start your evening off. If that's what you're, if that's what you're doing, if you're doing uh, red, reds at a dinner party. Uh, yeah, we all love the donated wines. Oh, legs. Legs. This is a term, oh, that's, that wine has nice legs. And you turn your glass, you guys can all do it with me. Turn your glass to one side, 
You can roll it if you want, but just turn to one side and then bring it back. And then if you see lines coming down, that's what they're talking about with legs. And people say, oh, nice legs. This wine has really great legs. Well, it turns out that term doesn't really mean anything. It just means there's a, a lot of alcohol in the wine. And that's what creates the legs. It's just an observation. It's just something, something to say. Okay, someone asked me about ZZ Top. Okay, so that's the same question about legs. Okay, Alex, stop asking questions. Okay, how do you pair food with wine? I, I think Jeff and Joan Jacobson are on here somewhere, but they are uh, my wine mentors from the very first uh, Vine to Wine when it was the classic, and it was Vine to Wine. And Jeff got me to bid on a book in your auction, in the Vine to Wine auction, of how to pair wine and food with everything. The book is like this thick. So it's a big, it's a big question. You can email me, eve at evewine101.com if you really want a, a very specific. But, you know, basically most people are like, oh, okay, fish and chicken goes with white wine and, you know, the meats go with red wines. It's slightly more complicated than that. If you're a red wine lover, but you also like fish and chicken, just douse that fish and chicken in like a, a darker sauce, in a barbecue sauce. It'll be fine with a red wine. It's, no, it's, it's not that complicated. So there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of pairings out there. Uh, one of the basic rules that I learned in, in my studies is you pair like with like. So if you're having an apple pie for dessert, you might want to have that with a sauterne or another dessert wine. Personally, I don't like sweet and sweet together. So I will pair, um, my favorite pairing is uh, food pairing that you can take home with you is a uh, sauterne or sweet wine. Think about a very sweet wine that may not be your thing. And have it with a big old hunk of blue cheese, which may not be your thing either. But uh, an idea of food pairing, okay, I see that guy laughing. The idea of food pairing is when you put those two things together, that it changes in your mouth. And my big aha moment was like, oh, this wine is so sweet and this cheese is, you know, sharp, sharp. But together you get this, though, of course, the sweetness is, is dissipated, right? But you get this nutty quality comes out in, in, in the wine and the cheese. You don't know what it is. But I went to a pairing. I must have had like a pound of the blue cheese. So that's one to, that's one to try at home. Uh, happy birthday to somebody else. Somebody loves me. Yeah, stop. No more from Alex. <laughs> I'm a, did somebody ask me about absinthe? Marley wanted to know what your favorite Pinot is. Yeah, Mar uh, Double E wants to know what my favorite Pinot is. That would be whichever one Steve Elzer brings over or, or um, – other burgundy fans. That's a, it's kind of an inside joke. I'm not a huge Pinot Noir fan. It's a light red wine, but I tend to the, the Burgundian version of it is. So the area of Burgundy, France makes Pinot Noir, but it's the grape there is called Burgundy. Here are Pinot Noir grape, which is uh, the same grape. We can't call it Burgundy because they own the name. We can only call it Pinot Noir. But the reason I like the Burgundian Pinot better is because their, their vineyards are how many years old? Way, way old <laughs> compared to our vineyards. So I feel like get more to our, is that Judy Benman? Hi, Judy. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. Um, what's the best way to store corked wine from Arnold? The best way to support, uh, store corked wine would be to uh, store it into your garbage disposal because you don't want any corked wine. <laughs> That's what is that what he really means? Wines with a cork. Oh, how, okay. Oh, yeah. He knows the answer to this one, too. So, um, Eddie, you better have any time. I'm supposed to talk for 20 minutes. Wines with a cork. A cork is a natural thing, just like your wine is living and breathing. So is your cork expanding, whatever. So you want to turn your wine ball that has a cork on, it, on its side to keep your cork wet. There's nothing harder... <sighs> To do than trying to pull a cork out of a bottle of wine that's been standing up for all because it's so dry and it's so hard to pull out and you're probably going to end up breaking it. However, if you have a wine, uh, certainly a sake, if you have a sake with the screw cap, which most of them have, those wines are made fresh and meant to drink fresh. And if you were to store that on its side, it would actually, it, uh, for my sake sum, he's told me that actually will kind of mess up your, that closure, that screw cap closure. So it, the metal will not be good for your sake. So sake upright, wind down, right? You got that? <laughs> I see people laughing. Best wine what, was oh, Stephanie wants to the best wine with salmon. That, that's a pretty standard pairing that people like Pinot Noir with salmon. I think like you guys are trying to suck me into the Pinot Noir thing. But it, again, it's, it's, it, it, you can picture the color of something. White wine with white food. Salmon with a lighter color, red wine, and of course your big giant steaks with a big giant cab that's the tannin in the wine can break down the fat in the, in the steak. So you go ahead, Stephanie, enjoy that pinot with that salmon. Shard. Yeah, you, yeah, my husband said you can have shard with it, but you know. Okay. 
Some wineries chill the reds. Wait, hold, you're going too fast. Charles wants to know, some wineries chill the reds. And I like this, it's becoming more popular. Uh, some reds like a Nouveau Beaujolais and some of the lighter reds are, are okay to have red, uh, chilled. And often, often here in my home during the summer months, I don't want, I mean, I'll drink white wine if I'm sitting outside, but I want to be in my house. I want my red wine. But it's, normally I would take my red wine from my chiller and I would set it up for an hour or two before dinner. But right now when it's really hot outside, I take it from my chiller and that's, that's what I want it. But keep in mind that the colder your wine is, it's harder to get aromas and flavors from it. So just, it may be preferential to you to taste it that way. And it is for me, but I'm not going to get the same smells and the same flavors. And it, in fact, with this wine that I poured probably a half an hour ago that I've added a little bit to, it's smelling and tasting different than it did an hour or so ago because it's breathing more. See, she's nodding, she gets it. Um, is there a good all-purpose wine for any occasion, Laura and Gabe? Yeah, sparkling. If you read um, Madame Clicquot's book about her um, Clicquot champagne, champagne goes with everything. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, gets you in the celebratory mood when somebody starts a party, I mean, there's, there's, I've, ha I've seen in my pairing book, almost everything goes with champagne, but probably because nobody just turns it down. They just, they just want to drink it. <laughs> how do you store, I, I taught, how do you store a screw top wine on upright? No. How no, do sorry. you store a screw top wine you upright? Drink it. drink it today. Oh, my husband says drink it right now. <laughs> Emmanuel and Clara, drink it now. <laughs> Is there a good all purpose wine for any occasion? Laura and Gabe. Well, I don't know if you like red or white. I mean, I would still probably stick to uh, something sparkling if I, if, that, if I just want to have one wine because everyone has different, different uh, tastes. Oh, Charles, is, that's a disguise. What's the best food to have with Pinot Grigio? Uh, you know what? Pinot Grigio is like, I'll tell you, in the baseline of white wines, Pinot Grigio is probably the easiest one to drink. It's not as acidic. It's got very, very fresh fruit, but it's an Italian wine. If, certainly if you're getting it from Italy. And if you've ever been to Italy, the food that you, the wine that you have there is meant to pair with the food that you have there. So when we're in Italy and we sit down at a restaurant and they bring me the menu, I say, well, you tell me what's your local wine. You order the local wine in any country, in any place. In the United States, everybody in the United States makes their own wine. But as far as Pinot Grigio, I would, to answer the question correctly, I would probably think, Seafood, something light, not with something too much fruit in it. Uh, a cold uh, seafood salad, lobster might be okay with that. Um, I wouldn't have anything too heavy. If your Pinot Grigio has a little acidity to it, and those of you who are talking about acidic wines, those wines work really well with uh, pasta with a creamy sauce that cuts right through all that cream and it doesn't torch you too much with too much cream. How important is it to use the correct glass for the varietal, Melanie wants to know. So she knows I have a bunch of stuff behind me, which I'm not going to need, but I have different glasses. When one of my friends who's online right now tonight comes over, we use these special glasses. This is, my husband doesn't even get these, right, Steve? This is the Psalm, this is a Psalm glass. And compared to our Logics glass, you can see the difference. So what happens with this glass is for a Psalm, for someone that, that rates and judges wine, this gives me a really big nose and I really get a chance to get all the aromas out of it. But this is, a, this is your standard Cab and Bordeaux glass. And then for those freaking Pinot fans, this is your Pinot glass. So it has a wider bowl. This is for Pinot Noirs, Burgundy, Chardonnay, Chablis. This glass has a wider bowl because, if I'm right, um, those wines are more delicate. Okay. So I can get the aroma a little bit better from this glass. Oh, my husband's favorite glass. <laughs> how, do you, how do you sneak wine into a movie theater? Is somebody Charles, asking that question? Charles, yeah. Who can you sneak wine in a movie theater? This is a, what's this thing called? Pirate something? Mm -hmm. And we use this on cruise ships and we make martinis with this. So they're laughing. Yeah, this is really good. I've got several shapes of these things and you can hide it in your luggage. I don't sneak wine in movie theaters. Honestly, I'm hoping the drive-ins really do come back because I totally, we always brought a bottle of wine or two and pizza and it was a fun night. Okay, ha, ha, ha. Favorite Viognier? Um, actually, I like the Viognier from Pacella, who's one of our wineries tonight. I've known the winemakers for about 10 years, and they're doing a better job year after year. It gets better and better, and they make a very nice Viognier out of Paso. And if you guys that like Pinot Grigio, I would suggest moving over to Viognier. It's a little bit, it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit better. 
I like Pinot. Are you judging me? Yeah, forget it. You'll <laughs> go talk to someone else that likes Pinot. Why would you have wine left over? Yeah, I don't <laughs> we Oh, here we go. If you have any wine left over at the end of the night, how long will it last after you open it from Alex and Arnold? So Alex and Arnold haven't learned anything in the 10 years of knowing me. Um, and Nola, I think, asked the same question. Was uh, left over wine, a red wine or white wine? I have this. This is, uh, there's a word for it. I just call it an air sucker outer thing. So you take, the, your cork is gone. You put this in your bottle. You put this on top and you're suctioning out the air of it, okay? So whatever's left isn't, isn't so much exposed to the air. Whether it's a white wine or a red wine, once you do that, it really should go in your fridge because again, the wine is living and breathing and dying. So do that. And after you've had the half a bottle, whatever you've done, you, you want to finish the other half the next night. It's not meant to go in your fridge for a week. It will definitely change and not taste so good. And then one other tip on, on storing wine after you've opened it is if you have a bottle of red wine and it doesn't taste quite good, it's too tart. If you leave that overnight and don't put anything in it, it's like spaghetti sauce. Yeah, I've had it too much to drink. <laughs> Those people need to be muted. Thanks for joining us, but you must mute yourselves. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Bye, Edmund. All right, let's see what else. <laughs> I might be hitting my 20, 20 two minute, two minute warning. Oh, I have two minutes left for you people. My email is eve at evewine101.com. I love taking questions. My website's evewine101. I have cocktails behind me. If anybody has a cocktail question, because I have a certification spirits too. Okay. Uh, Last question from Charles. Can you recommend a good wine from the 99 cent store? A good wine from the 99 cent store. No, Charles, I recommend you stop messaging me. <laughs> good, good, um, um, well, yeah, you can get Trader Joe's. I take people to Trader Joe's and help them pick out wine. But they're, and I can get you a bottle of wine and good at Trader Joe's in the five or $10 range. Mm -hmm. But it's not as good as the wines we have tonight. I love you too. Obviously, Charles has had enough. <laughs> uh, wine in a box. Uh, there's one called the Cube at Target that got very good recommendations the white wine and also the black box wine that they had it. Uh, we've had it around for a while. And I even heard once that Two Buck Chuck, which isn't in a box, but Two Buck Chuck passed some, some judges. They didn't realize it was not that great. They thought it was fabulous. So, Oh, my favorite bourbon right now, Hillary, is uh, Booker. What's in there, Eddie? You go find it. They're going to cut me off. Hey, Steve. <laughs> you guys are finally scrolling past me. Oh, Bib and Tucker. Bib and Tucker, you can get it at Total Wine. Uh, I buy uh, my everyday bourbon is uh, the other one, Woodenville, right? This is Bib and Tucker. This is my sipping bourbon. And the, the wooden bill of Louise from 8th and Real turned me on too. And that's made in Washington. If you guys know your bourbons, they're still supposed to only come from Kentucky, right? But that one comes from Washington. It's a really nice sipping bourbon. But I do a lot of uh, cocktails. In fact, my husband has a cocktail in front of him right now. <laughs> so I thank you. You're wonderful. I, my time might be up. Time's up. My time's up. I would take more time, but we have to go back to the regularly scheduled programming and, and that's it. So give me thumbs up or, or something like that, whatever these reaction things are. Oh, well, maybe it doesn't work on the Zoom. Thank you, Eve. I want to take a minute and just personally thank both Taylor Kalstrom and Eve Bushman. They are the two co-chairs for tonight's event. Eve and Taylor, thank you for your leadership your encouragement and your optimism during the planning process of this event. Who knew? Who, who knew that we would be able to put together a wine to vine? Uh, I, I said that wrong, didn't I? Yeah, let's try that again. Who knew that we would be able to put together a vine to wine to go event, that's better, in less than 30 days? That is really hard to say after three glasses of wine. <laughs> now, in all seriousness, this event could not have happened without Taylor and Eve's leadership. So let's give them a thumbs up to both of them. I realize we are nearing the end of the evening, but please stick with us for just a few more moments. We have some more entertainment, and frankly, your support is vital to this organization. I'm going to turn this back over to Steve and Alicia. They wrote a song specifically for Circle of Hope and they are going to perform it for you now. After they have finished, 
our evening will continue with the music of Lance Allen. Their performances, both of them, will be a perfect time for you to do two things. Scan that QR code and go directly to the auction site and make a direct donation to Circle of Hope. And two, keep bidding up those auction items. The auction site will be open and live until May 31st. You, the people of Santa Clarita, have demonstrated your generosity over and over again. Please consider donating to this fantastic organization. Circle of Hope will be able then to keep helping individuals in our community that have been diagnosed with cancer. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. It has been my absolute pleasure to serve as your MC. So Steve and Alicia, it's all yours. Good night. Thanks again, Melanie, and thanks to all of you for letting us be a part of this really special evening. Circle of Hope holds a very dear place in both of our hearts, and so we have this for you.
Thank you, everybody, for letting us be a part of this. We are proud to be here, and we there's more to come. So back to you. Well, thank you, Alicia and Steve, and thank you to Circle of Hope for having me play tonight. Um, this is my sixth year in a row performing at Vine to Wine, and it's an event that I look forward to every year. I'm going to play a little bit now while you finish up your meals and enjoy your wine, and feel free to sing along with me. time this evening and I hope you all did too. It's truly an honor to play for you guys each and every year. I want to thank you all for sticking around and for supporting such an amazing organization. Have a wonderful rest of your evening, weekend, and 2020. I'm Lance Allen and I look forward to playing for you in person next year. Good night everybody. Thank you Lance. All right, one last thumbs up. This time the thumbs up is for you. Thank you, all of the attendees tonight, for your unwavering support 
of this fantastic organization called Circle of Hope. I wanna fill you in one more time on some of the bidding wars we've got going on. One of them is for the, uh, for the gift cards. So there's a, a continual bidding war going on on the gift cards, the Sephora basket, and it looks like there's a bidding war on the museum lovers basket as well. I wanna personally thank Dennis, Elizabeth, and Jeremy for your direct donations. Thank you so much. I also wanna thank the person who made a donation to buy the cancer medication for a patient. Uh, let's see what else. There is another bidding war going on on the La Quinta vacation in the desert. Um, two items were purchased with the buy it now button, the baby boy basket and the liquid gold, which is the Jack Daniels basket. And oh my goodness, there are nearly 120 people bidding on these auction items. This site is going to be open until May 31st. So keep bidding. We're going to hang out for a while, play some more music in the background. Um, just keep, keep, keep looking at that bidding item, at that baskets, keep bidding, making direct donations. And one more time, thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting this fantastic organization. Have a wonderful evening, and I will look forward to seeing you again soon. Good night.